under the Copyright Act, the, the author of the original work, and the author is the creator of that original work, is automatically entitled to copyright. Um, but with copyright, because it's not on a register, you have to be able to assert your copyright. So you have to be able to show that you did come up with that original work and when you did it. So for something like a logo, say you design your own logo, and this, you know, a lot of people do design their own logos, especially small businesses, make, that, make your, your marketing budget go further. If you design your logo, it's quite a good idea to do something like send it by registered mail to an address or email it to someone or yourself so then it gets date stamped. So if you're ever in a situation where you have to assert your copyright over a competitor, you can say, look, we can establish that this is when we came up with the original work because we've got this date stamped evidence being the email to yourself or the letter you sent yourself by registered post showing your drafts of the logo. But basically, it's a proprietary right. If you're the author and you come up with it and it's, and it's an original work, it's got sufficient um, sort of creative flair to be deemed an original work, then you will just have copyright automatically by virtue of having created the work. Whenever there's a comparison of trademarks, you, you know, the law says you have to compare the, trade, the, the marks as a whole. Now, Whitcalls, I don't think, would ever argue that they own just that apostrophe in isolation. And I don't think anyone could claim that they own the apostrophe, the, the punctuation mark in isolation across the board. It, that, we would never register it for them because it's... It's, it would be unfair for other traders. They should be entitled to use what is just a punctuation mark. Vodafone and their mark have gone a step further and they've put it in a circle and as you mentioned it was upside down. Those combination of factors make a distinctive trademark. And I don't think anyone will ever confuse the Vodafone logo with an apostrophe. You know, they, they've thought carefully about it. If they, just tried, if they just had an apostrophe, well then anyone else could use an apostrophe and it would be hard for them to stop it. So they've gone for a distinctive trademark. Wickles use it their apostrophe in an unusual fashion above the word Whitcalls, um, the I and the Whitcalls. So in that context it's distinctive, it's not distinctive by itself. If someone wants to use their own name in a particular industry, um, they'd be prudent as when adopting any trademark, because you, your name, if you use it as your, as your trading name, it's still, it's still your brand, it's still your trademark in the market. You want to make sure that you're not going to infringe someone else's rights. Now there are certain defences to trademark infringement, some of them and you know this could possibly fall into that situation, but it all depends on the on the situation. For example, McDonald's is absolutely famous. They've got a huge market awareness now. I think if you were to open a, a burger bar now, even if you were a McDonald, you could run into trouble, obviously. So again, it comes back to that principle we said at the start of the interview. Before you go doing your branding, the first thing you want to do is do some marketplace searching and search our register to make sure there's nothing similar out there already. If you come and come across something that's similar, um, well, and you're not sure, get legal advice at that point. It's far cheaper to get a bit of legal adv advice early on to say, are we potentially going to infringe here, rather than wait till you're down the track and you've paid for all your materials and signage. That's, that's, a, that's a bad scenario, you don't want to end up there.